Good morning and welcome to Salem's worship service this morning. This morning we'll be opening up with Leaning on the Everlasting Arms, found at 133 in the hymnal. Church. Today is July 5th, 5th Sunday after Pentecost. My name is Trisha Abraham and we'll start with our call to worship. I'll read the lighter print, you read the darker print. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. The Lord is good to all and his compassion is over all that he has made. All your works shall give thanks to you, O Lord, and all your faithful shall bless you. They shall speak of glory of your kingdom and tell your power. To make known to all people your mighty deeds and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and your dominion, dominion endures and throughout all generations. The Lord is faithful in all his words and gracious in all his deeds. The Lord upholds all who are falling and raises up all who are about to die. Our affirmation of faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. 
I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Now for this week's announcement. Worship packets for July are available. If you haven't already picked up your packet, they will be available for pickup Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday during our normal office hours. Please remember to pick these packets up during our office hours because we are closed on Mondays and Fridays. Viewers for June 28th worship service was only 19. But don't worry. If you missed that sermon, you can always see it again. Go back to our YouTube channel. You can subscribe if you haven't already done so. But please, Salem, remember to share those videos on your social media outlets and with your family and with your friends. The offering for June 28th was $1,390. Once again, thank you for your liberal giving. Will you bow your heads and pray with me? Father God, we stand before you today, standing in thanks, giving thanks to you for all that you do for us, keeping us safe throughout this pandemic. We want to pray for all our protesters standing out there on the line, fighting for black lives to matter. We pray for our government, Lord, showing corruption at its finest. We pray, God, that you step in and change their hearts, open their minds so they can see the wrong that is being done, not only to us or them, but to this entire nation. We pray for all our essential workers out there standing on the line, putting their lives on the line every day to try and save people, keep families together. We pray for all of those that are standing in long lines trying to be tested. And God, we pray that you heal our land from this pandemic. I pray for this church, Lord, that we can continue to give thanks to you, show praises unto you, and bring the word from out of the inside of these walls to outside in the community. We ask these things in your son Jesus' name, amen. Our next song is gonna be Clean Up, sung by Brother Willie Perry. A few years ago, I made a lot of mistakes in my life, and I decided that I was going to do something about it. Let me tell you what I decided that I was going to do. I got to clean up what I messed up. Oh, yeah. Started my life over again. Yeah, I got to clean up. Yes, I do, y'all. What I messed up. I started my life over again. You know what I said? Listen, I made up my mind. I'm not lying no more. Cause a liar and a cheater can't make it to the door. I got to clean up. But I messed up. Oh, yeah. I started my life over again. Yeah, I got that clean. Yes, I do, y'all. But I messed up. Oh, yeah. I started my life over again. You know what else I said? Listen. I made up my mind. I'm not running no more. I'm coming back to church. I'm going to come right through these doors. Clean up. Yes, I do, y'all. Yeah. Trying to get away. Yeah. Started my life 
Yes, I do, oh, y'all. Yeah. But I messed up. Oh, yeah. I started my life over again. I got one more verse on you. Listen. I made up my mind. I'm not cheating no more. Because a cheater can't make through heaven's door. Clean up. Yes, I oh, do, yeah. y'all. Can I, can I get a witness? Oh, yeah. Out of my life, whoa, again, yeah. I gotta clean up, yes, I do, y'all. Yeah, know what I messed up, oh, yeah. I started my life over again. I gotta clean up, oh, yeah. But I messed up, oh, yeah. Gonna start our life over again. Yes, we do, oh, y'all. Oh, yeah. But we messed up. Oh, yeah. Let's start our life over again. Gotta clean up. Oh, yeah. But I messed up. Oh, yeah. And we start our life over again. Yeah. We gotta clean up. Oh, yeah. But we messed up. Oh, yeah, and start our life over again. We got to clean up. Oh, yeah, we messed up. Oh, yeah, and start our life over again. Yeah, we got to clean up. Oh, yeah, we messed up. Oh, yeah, and start our life over again. We want to thank each and every person that has given and continues to give to keep this church going. It keeps our lights on and water going. And so we are thankful for those who have it to give. Uh, also, we want to remind each and every person that it's the first of the month. You can come and pick up your uh, packets for the month to uh, follow services throughout the month. And for those that me and Miss Adams deliver to each month, we will be passing them out this weekend. So be looking for that. If you're not home, we leave them on your porch or something. So therefore, when you get back, uh, you have that. So now we're going to pray for our offering. Bow your heads, please. Lord. We come to you today thanking you for this offering. We pray for those that have it to give. We pray for those that wish to give and have not. Lord, we pray that these monies that are given to this church just continue to keep us going, keep us up and moving, and we continue that we can, we, we pray that we can continue to keep the uh, people giving so we can continue to do the things that we do for this church and this community. We thank you, Lord, for all. In Jesus' name, amen. illumination. God, our helper, by your Holy Spirit, open our minds that as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, we may be led into your truth and taught your will for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our scripture reading today comes from Matthew 11, 16 through 19, 25 through 30. But to what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplace and calling to one another. We played the flute for you and you did not dance. We wailed and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say he has a demon. The son of man came eating and drinking, they say, look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners, yet wisdom is vindicated by his deeds. At that time, Jesus said, 
I thank you, Father Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to the infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. This is the word of God spoken by the people of God. Thanks be to God. Welcome to Salem United Methodist Church. My name is Tavellius Bright. This is July the 5th, and you have made it to Salem TV to worship with us on this Sunday, the first Sunday of July in the year 2020. Well, you know, the new Colossus is the name of a poem that is inscribed on the base of the Statue of Liberty that of course, you all know, famously stands at the entrance of the New York City Harbor. That poem that's inscribed on the base compares the values of conquest that were the inspiration of the original famous Greek Colossus of Rome, another big statue that was one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. Whereas that great statue stood for the power and conquest of an ancient people, the new one stands for a new set of values. Those values are hospitality, diversity, and inclusion of all who hurt and who are injured by the traditional values that caused the ancients to erect their monument. Emma Lazarus, an American Jewish political activist and a poet whose poem is inscribed, whose sonnet was uh, um, inscribed on the Statue of Liberty, she wrote it in 1883. And that sonnet introduces the reader to the Statue of Liberty. Instead of a mighty warrior, like the Colossus of Rhodes, our giant is a woman, gracefully robed, holding not the weapons of war, but the instruments of hospitality and hope. The poem names her not as Lady Liberty, but as the mother of exiles, who holds the torch of freedom in front of the golden door of American hospitality. In today's American political arena, both conservatives and, liber and liberals point to the words of Emma Lazarus's point and come to completely different conclusions when trying to grapple with modern legislative issues like immigration reform, criminal justice reform, and of course defunding a brutal police department. Today's gospel lectionary reading, reading from Matthew, the 11th chapter, starting at verse 16 through 19 and then 25 through 30, shows us that Emma Lazarus was not the first person to invite us to embrace a new and more compassionate set of morals. I believe that there's an Independence Day message for the people of God that comes to us from Jesus and Matthew's gospel this morning. Share this message with me. The sermon title is God is Pulling for You. God is Pulling for You. Let us pray. Gracious Father, most merciful God in heaven, Lord, we love you, we lift you up, and we magnify your holy name. But right now, Heavenly Father, we need to hear a word from you. So please, Father, please, 
Remove this humble messenger and leave standing up here in this place, Lord, your good, your true, and your perfect word for your people. So that when we enter this online time of the sermon together, Lord, we will, we will leave with that blessed assurance that your glory and your glory alone has been shown forth. And that indeed your goodness, your grace, and your mercy will continue to manifest itself in our lives. This and all other blessings we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Well, Lady Liberty, or the mother of exiles, could have spoken the words of Jesus in our gospel reading in Matthew, the 11th chapter and the 28th verse, when, when it says, Come to me, all you that are weary and carrying heavy burdens and I will give you rest. It would seem that the mother of exiles had a father. It would seem that she shares the same set of similar family values with our father in heaven. These values are the ones spoken by Jesus. Those values are important for us to remember on this first Sunday of July. We will share those values that have been enshrined with our sacrament of Holy Communion this morning. We invite all people to God's table in the spirit of hospitality, diversity, and inclusion. Those values are the ones behind our tradition called the open table. The open table tradition of communion is an inclusive interpretation of the Methodist doctrine that allows people of all Christian denominations to share communion with us. Other denominations have stricter rules about who can attend the communion table, but it's important for us at Salem to be good and accepting host. Because you see, a good host is very intentional when it comes to building an invitation list to an important event like this. If we know who's invited, then, then we can serve them in a way that achieves the desired goal of the gathering. Goals vary from event to event. At a committee meeting, we, we want to make sure that all of the committee members are invited first. And then we want to e equip each and every member with an, a, with an agenda and any other supporting material that it'll take for them to conduct the business of the committee in an effective way and in an effective manner. On the other hand, at a dinner party, we want to invite people who will be able to relax and enjoy a meal with each other. And then we want to equip them with opportunities to mix and mingle and get to know one another a little better. When we invite people to our communion table, what's the goal and what's the objective? Who do we invite and, and how do we equip them to be a to have a, a successful visit with us around our communion table? The answer to those questions will require for someone to reach out and, and to research and, and to find our prospective invitees and to give us a comprehensive profile of each and every one of them. That someone is Jesus. And the profile is in Matthew's 11th chapter, starting with verse 16. Jesus said, and, and I'm sure he said it with love, but to, by, by what will I compare this present generation? 
That's what Jesus says. It's like children sitting in the marketplace and calling to one another. Now, I don't generally find that, that adults respond very well when you call them children. <laughs> children are immature adults, and, and children are not always expected to react and respond like they will when they grow up. <laughs> Jesus quotes the children, however, so that we can see what's important to them. What's on their mind? And the children in Jesus' story are angry. In Matthew eleven seventeen, 17, because, you see, their host is not dancing to their music. Let me tell you, I have teenagers, and sometimes I, they say things to me like, okay, boomer, when I'm trying to dance to their music on those TikTok videos. It's hard to learn those new dances. And, and the fact is, is that I like some of the songs they listen to. Even if I can't understand half of the lyrics most of the time. Sometimes when I do find out the lyrics, I realize I don't want to know the lyrics. But it's worth the sore back that I get from doing those dances to find out that my girls really do appreciate when I put in the effort. <laughs> that has nothing to do with the sermon. Let me get back to the point. <laughs> my point is, is that an adults hate being called spoiled children. But here Jesus is, pushing us out of our comfort zone, calling the adults spoiled. In Matthew 11 and 18, it expounds by, upon that quote by the children and, and explains how this generation, the, the people whom Jesus is talking about in this scripture, rejected John the Baptist and even Jesus himself. Jesus speaks to the criticism that people had of John for his austerity and self-denial. They criticized John for wearing rough clothes and eating unrefined food. John didn't care about those fancy things. John only cared, only cared about proclaiming the coming of the kingdom of God, led by Jesus Christ, the Messiah. It was really the people themselves who were who, who so valued those soft robes and, and all of that gourmet cuisine. They also criticized Jesus, even though he, was, he wasn't as rough around the edges as John. In fact, Jesus enjoyed fine wine and dining at the homes of wealthy and influential people that he met during his ministry. Jesus was used to accepting the hospitality of people like, well, you remember Zacchaeus, the tax collector in the sycamore tree. And Martha, Mary's sister, known as the best cook in all of Bethany. And who can forget those generous hosts at the, the wedding in Cana, where Jesus turned the water into wine. Yet the same people who rebuked John for not eating with anyone also rebuked Jesus for eating with the wrong people, like tax collectors and sinners. Here we realize that Jesus is creating a profile of us. And the invitation is to his heavenly banquet above. Like spoiled children, Jesus says we have unreasonable expectations that our men and women of God will conform to our vision of what we think they should be. In short, how they should act and what they should say. And if they don't do that, well, we're disappointed. 
because they haven't danced to our tune. And when that happens, we tend to find fault with the men and women of God. On the other hand, we, we clergy folk need to know this characteristic of the people that we serve. And we need to know that because it is our job to be good hosts. Jesus' profile of, of the people in this scripture is useful because we clergy did not just give our hearts to the Holy Spirit in service and sacrifice. We gave it so that we could be a part of this service, this sacred service of Holy Communion. We need Holy Communion just as much as you do. We need all the grace of Holy Communion. We all need the Lord's Supper. We all need to receive Christ regularly. Jesus invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sins and seek to live in peace with one another. Jesus invites all. Jesus' invitation is hospitable diverse and inclusive especially to us spoiled children of God you might say why would I want to attend God's party full of spoiled ungrateful children well Jesus the greatest of all hosts would never invite you to a gathering without first equipping you to make sure that that gathering was successful the act of in inviting sinners to God's table of grace alone has proven God's wisdom. In fact, Jesus in Matthew 11 and 25 thanks God for hiding wisdom of his inter invitation to all of his invitees, you and me. In verse 26, it says, yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. In short, God's grace is all the equipment we need to have a successful Holy Communion. Verse 27, it says, all things have been handed over to me by my Father. And that means Jesus was sent, is the one who has sent out the invitations. Jesus is the one who made the seating chart. He's created the menu and it is Jesus who, who set the agenda for us all to follow. Jesus is God's Son and the only one who knows the Father well enough to introduce you to him and to invite you to God's house, to God's table, to God's hospitality, to God's diversity, to God's inclusiveness. Jesus has the authority to invite anyone, but he invited you and me because he knows us and how we might best be served. Jesus says, come to me, all who are weary. God knows how tired we get. I've been working harder recently during this quarantine that, than uh, and doing to bring you these virtual worship services that I, I've ever done before. God knows. God gets it, and God is good. God knows that, that you are carrying heavy burdens. Most of us are, are carrying heavy burdens of our own, and we carry the burdens of other folks too. Sometimes you can shed other people's baggage, but, but sometimes you are yoked like an ox to a baggage cart or a wagon. 
And it is your job to get it all from point A to point B. God knows your emotional baggage. Your financial burdens. Your relationship luggage. And even the stuff that you put in your shopping cart. That you put in the layaway that you haven't even checked out yet. You know those things. Like your hopes and dreams. Your plans and your desires. God knows all about your burdens. And, and he has something for you when you accept Jesus' invitation. Jesus says that he will give us rest. Jesus' rest isn't a vacation, an escape, or, or, or a grand getaway. Jesus' rest is, is more than that. It's more of a staycation. <laughs> Jesus' rest happens while you're, you're working from home. Not working from your, the home where your address and your mail comes from your dining room table, but, but working from that mansion that's not built by hands. In fact, God's work is not hard at all. There's, there's no burden in it. God's work is like pulling a heavy wagon, wagon but, but, it, but it magically has an effortless yoke. Can you imagine that? An ox or a heavily laden wagon pulling as hard as he can, but he doesn't have to. All the ox has to do is just walk and everything just follows. Why don't you accept your invitation today and feel the, the rest and, and peace that the world can't give you and that the world can't take away? Pull your, pulling your load has been a struggle. You don't have to struggle like that anymore. Pulling your load and, and everybody else's load is all it takes for you to break your back. But you don't have to break your back like that anymore because God's heart is humble. And even though God can, can make you love him, he doesn't. You're free to choose. You're even free to, to fill your wagon with everyone's baggage if you want. Some of you, some of you out there have been, been pulling other people's baggage in your wagon so long. It can make it even hard to get out of the bed some mornings. Don't keep struggling under heavy loads. Don't keep pulling loads that don't even belong to you. Stop now because the day is coming when you can't pull anything anymore. But before your strength gives out completely, come to Jesus. Come to Jesus' invitation and be transformed. How is it that God's yoke is so easy and, and God's burden is so light? How can God make all of your burden stop hurting you so much? Well, the reason is that you've been pulling the weight of your wagon all along. But now God is pulling for you. Amen. Amen. We're now ready for Holy Communion. This is the liturgy known as a service of word and table number two. It's found on page 12 of your United Methodist hymnal, those of you who have them at home. I'm going to read the light colored text, and I would ask if you have the text with you, please read along with the bold colored text. Holy Communion, 
a service of word in table number two, beginning with the invitation. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love and we have not loved our neighbors. And we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Then you say, in the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Back to me. And then if we were all together, we would pass the sign of peace with one another. However, in this day of COVID-19 and social distancing, a friendly elbow bump will suffice. Moving on to the great Thanksgiving on page 13. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your son Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church. Delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water, and the Spirit. On a night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant. Pour it out for you and for many for the, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in, as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world. The body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in his holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray together in the words that our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now if you'll take your fellowship cups, peel the top layer of foil off to take out the little round wafer of host. I'll remind us that on the night when Jesus gave himself up for us, he took the bread and he broke it. He gave it to his disciples and he said, take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Now we'll, till, we'll peel the, not teal, but mauve colored foil off of the top of this cup. Exposing the wine underneath. And I will remind us that when the supper was over, we, he took the cup. He blessed it, gave it to his disciples and said, drink this, all of you. This is the cup of the new covenant shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Thank you, dear saints of Salem United Methodist Church and all of the saints who are joining us here online for including us in your first Sunday communion service. That's right. You don't have to pull it all by yourself anymore. God is pulling for you. So let go of the burdens of the world with the knowledge that you have been blessed with this knowledge. And if you truly count yourself blessed, then now is the time that I wish that you would receive this benediction. Would you do it with me right now? Go forth in peace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, let it rest, rule, and abide within each and every one of you now, henceforth, and forever. Will all the children of God say amen? Amen. God bless you and have a fantastic Sunday.